English easy. Apparently moving left is really hard. So what do I mean by this? Well, here, I'm going to have two different languages, left and left three. They're just names of languages. Where left is the set of Turing machine and input here, where the Turing machine never moves left on the input string W. So it only moves right. And we're talking about old... We're talking about ordinary Turing machines here, the ones that just move left and right, no stopping, no jumping, whatever. It's just left and right. The left three language is very similar. So we again we have so again we have Turing machine and input pairs right here, where the Turing machine eventually moves left three times in a row on W. So the first one is asking, does it ever move left at all? And the second one is does it ever move left three times in a row? And you think, well, those are kind of related things. It turns out that this is a fine line between being decidable and undecidable. There's an algorithm that you can there's an algorithm that you can write to figure out whether an arbitrary Turing machine on any arbitrary input will ever move left on W, and it actually is pretty fast. But if impossible to figure out whether an arbitrary Turing machine on an arbitrary input will eventually move three times in a row left. So let's prove that both of these are true, that the first one is decidable and the second one is undecidable. Okay, so let's prove that the left language is decidable, that this arbitrary Turing machine never moves left on W. So let's try to visualize what this Turing machine is actually going to do. So this is the M machine. And let's say that we have the input W right here. So W1, W2, W3, up to WN here. And let's say that the blanks are here. Well, what's going to happen? At the very beginning, we're going to be positioned at that very first cell. And then eventually, we're going to move some direction. Well, on the first transition, if we try to move left, well, then that's a problem, right? So then if we try to move right, then let's say we try to move left after that. Well, then we just move left. So what happens if M just runs right forever? So let's think about what happens when we reach this first blank here. So we're in some state, and let's say that it moves left. Well, then the, we just figured out that the Turing machine moves left. Well, think about, let's say we move right. Well, at this point, we could change state possibly, right? So we could be in some state when looking at the first blank, and then maybe at some other state at the second blank. But there are only a finite number of states that we could be in while still looking at blanks and moving right. So let's say that there are, let's say, 100 states in this Turing machine here. Well, then I can only do this moving right thing 100 times before I know that I will have repeated a state at some point because I'm only moving right. If at any point I move left, then obviously I need to reject. But if we keep moving right and we exhausted every possible state for sure, and we never move left in the process, therefore I know that this Turing machine is never going to move left on the input W. So all that we need to do then is to simulate M on W for let's see how many transitions. Well here, I need to wait for the Turing machine to move right all past all of these n characters of the input and the number of states number of times over here. So for n, which is the length of the input string here, plus the number of states transitions. And at that point, if we've never moved left at this point, we know we will never move left. So therefore, if we haven't moved left at this point, then we never will. And that's an algorithm to figure out whether or not this Turing machine on this arbitrary input is going to ever move left. We know that this is an algorithm because the input is always a finite size and the Turing machine is of finite size. And so we can use like a universal Turing machine or use multiple tapes to keep track of this counter for us. But all that we're doing is we're just simulating the original machine on some tape and we can do that pretty easily. So this language left is decidable, 
Now let's prove that left three is undecidable. Okay, so let's prove that left three is undecidable where we have a Turing machine M and an input W and M eventually moves left three times in a row on W. So the problem here is this is an arbitrary Turing machine. We know nothing about it. So what we want to do is we want to solve, let's say, the halting problem using a supposed solver for this. So in other words, what we're going to do is we're going to reduce the halting problem to left three. Okay. And how is that going to work? What we're going to do is we're going to force this Turing machine M to not move left three times in a row because in general, this Turing machine could move left three times in a row by itself. It's allowed to. But what we're going to do is we're going to, if the Turing machine is about to halt on this input W, then we're going to then make it move left three times in a row. So what's the general idea here? For each transition of this Turing machine M, and we actually have to work with a specific type of, of transition in order for this to work, but all that we're going to do is whichever direction this transition moves, do the transition, then move right, and then move left. And then we're going to be back at the same position. And even if this Turing machine M moves left three times in a row, let's say, well, in the camera, it's actually this way. So let's say it moves left three times in a row. Well, we're going to simulate the transition, which is one left. Then I'm going to make it move right and then back. Then it's going to do a left, which means I'm going to do a right and then a left, and then another left, which and after that, I'm going to do a right and a left. So at every point, I could be doing two lefts in a row, but I'm never going to do three lefts in a row. So let's say that we have a transition that looks like this. So P state going to state Q. And let's say that the transition is reading an A, changing it to a B, and I don't actually care about the direction here. So it could either be right or left. It does not matter whatsoever. So what are we going to actually do here? So what we're going to do is we're going to transform this into the following form. So I have the P state here and the Q state here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce two states in the middle. So I'm going to have a X1 state and an X2 state. These are going to be different for every single transition in here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to have three transitions here. The first one's going to carry out the original transition. So that's completely unmodified. But now we have this X1 state right here and we got to fill in these other two transitions. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in transitions that move right and then move left. The problem is that I need to be able to figure out what the thing on the right is when I move there, but it's easy to actually fix that. So we just wrote this cell A to be B and we moved in some certain direction D. Then what we're going to do is regardless of the direction, it does not actually matter. What we're going to do is we're going to have C going to C and moving right and then C going to C and moving left. And these two transitions are for all tape characters. C in the tape alphabet. So here there's going to be a whole bunch of transitions going from X1 to X2 and then from X2 to Q here. So here, whatever happens here, even if this is a left, then I'm not going to have three lefts in a row no matter what because I'm interjecting an R in between here. And so at worst, we can have two lefts in a row, but we're never going to have three lefts in a row. However, we can't have this be for every transition. We got to have some certain properties about Q. So Q is not the accept state. And... Q is not the reject state. So why does Q have to not be one of these two states? Because we want to enforce this property of being able to halt exactly when we move left three times in a row. So in the normal course of the computation, we're never going to move left three times in a row. But once we get to this point, 
what I want to do is I want to enforce moving left three times in a row only at that point. So let's look at a transition of that form. So P going to a state Q accept, let's say, and this will work exactly the same for Q reject because we're working with the halting problem here. So let's say it's changing an A to a B and it goes in some direction D. I have no idea which one. It actually won't matter here. So again, what we're gonna do is we're going to make a transformation. And I'm not gonna detail every single thing here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna carry out that same transition and I'm gonna make a set of states right here. So I'm gonna call it except one. And then what we're gonna do here, I'm just gonna write it in English, is I'm gonna move right. And it's actually important I do that. So I'm gonna have an except two state and that's gonna move right yet again and I'm gonna have an accept three state, which is gonna move right yet again. And you think, aren't we trying to move left? Here's the problem. If we're really early on in the tape and I try to move left, I might hit the left-hand end of the tape. But if I move right three times and then left three times, then we're home free. There's no issue with that whatsoever. So all that we need to do then is to have even more states here that are going to move left. So this is gonna move left. I'm gonna have an accept five state. And then I'm gonna move left. So this is the second left in a row. Then I'm gonna have an accept six state. And then finally, I'm gonna move left one more time and then that's going to be the accept state the q accept state finally we finally reached it and this same premise is going to work just by replacing this with q reject if we have a transition that goes from some state to q reject and what we enforced is if we're going to go to accept then we must encounter three rights and then three lefts the three lefts are the important part obviously and if we hit the reject state, we must have hit the reject state doing three lefts in a row. And so that is a proof that this problem is undecidable because if it were decidable, then no matter what the Turing machine and input W is, I can figure out whether that Turing machine halted on that input and we know that's an undecidable problem. So there's a fine line in between moving left once and moving left three times. I'm not sure about moving left twice in a row. That may be an interesting problem, may or may not. I have no idea, but moving left three times in a row is undecidable. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave comments down below about undecidable problems and what you thought about this one. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. That was easy. That was easy. That was easy.